Throughout this series, a lot of what we've shown you has been focused on the BigQuery console. But when you have large amounts of data or stakeholders, manually running jobs and creating resources won't be very scalable. In today's video, we're going to take a tour of the BigQuery APIs so that you can get started creating programmatic data workflows. The first API we'll discuss is BigQuery v2, which is really the core of BigQuery. Here you can manage data warehousing resources like data sets, tables, and routines. You can also manage machine learning models, as well as execution resources or jobs. Like most of the APIs we'll discuss today, you can interact with the BigQuery API through the various client libraries that we have available. I'm personally a Python fan, so having the Python library makes it so much easier for me to programmatically interact with BigQuery. OK, so when might you want to actually use this API? Well, first off, you may want to programmatically get answers to business questions using data that you have in BigQuery. Let's say every week you want each sales team's revenue to be added to a slide deck so it can be presented at your company's all hands. Well, in a Google Apps script, you can write some JavaScript that loops through each of the team names and uses them as inputs for a parameterized query that sums up their total revenue. We can use this information to populate each team slide, saving our analysts lots of time copying and pasting into the deck. Alternatively, you might want to use this API to add some new data into your tables. For example, maybe you have information about your customers stored in your application's Cloud SQL database. You have your customer addresses, but you really want to convert them into lat-long coordinates so you can leverage BigQuery's awesome geospatial capabilities. Well, in this case, you can create a Google Cloud function that runs each night and grabs the new transactions from the database using an external query. Then uses the Google Maps geocoding API to grab customer coordinates, like I'm showing in this Jupyter Notebook. Finally, you'll create and run a load job that appends the new data to your transactions table. So cool. And on the topic of analyzing data from transactional databases, remember a few videos ago when we talked about connections, which allow you to write federated queries against Cloud SQL? Well, there's an API for that too. The Connections API allows you to programmatically create and manage connections, which can be really useful if you have multiple databases supporting your application. Like if you're a B2B organization with one database for each of your accounts. Here, you may want to write a program that creates a new connection as part of the customer onboarding process. This way, your BigQuery users have access to the data without needing to send a request to you. You could even weave in the Google Cloud IAM API to ensure that only users who need access to the specified account's data are able to leverage the connection. Besides the BigQuery and the Connections API, what else is out there? Well, we talked a bit about pushing new data into storage, but BigQuery also has a dedicated storage API. The storage API has two components. The read client exposes a data stream suitable for reading large volumes of data. This includes features for parallelizing reads, performing partial projections, filtering data, and getting precise control over snapshot time. At Google, we use the Snapshot API to build out a series of Hadoop connectors that make it easy to use BigQuery as your source of truth data lake. You could also use it to build out your own custom connector. The right client, currently in preview, is a successor to the streaming mechanism found in the BigQuery v2 API. It supports more advanced write patterns, such as exactly one semantics for more robust streaming inserts. Keep an eye out for more info on this coming soon. Continuing on the topic of ingesting data into BigQuery, we also have the Data Transfer API. BigQuery Data Transfer Service allows you to automate work to ingest data from known sources like cloud storage, 
Google Marketing Platform, YouTube, and lots of other third-party data sources on a scheduled basis. With the API, you can do things like programmatically check credentials, trigger a manual run of the transfer, or get the responses from previous transfers. Now, we can't have a discussion about BigQuery APIs without mentioning the Reservation API, which allows you to manage reservations and assignments like we discussed in one of our earlier videos. This is super useful for programmatic workload management. Let's say the dashboard for your CEO needs to be run every morning at 8 a.m. Well, you want it to be super fast, so you better make sure the project it runs in will have access to enough slots. With the reservation Python SDK, you can write a program that runs each morning and creates a new slot reservation by specifying the reservation ID and how many slots it contains. Next, you'll assign the reservation to the designated BI project where the dashboard queries run and specify that this assignment is for query jobs. Finally, you can delete the assignment and reservation so that slots are released back to the organization. The last API I'll mention is one of my favorites, Data Q&A, which is currently in preview. Are business users at your organization always pinging you to query data on their behalf? Well, with the Q&A API, you can convert natural language text inquiries into SQL, meaning you can build a super powerful chatbot that fulfills those query requests or even give your business users access to connected sheets so they can ask analytics questions directly in a spreadsheet. Wow, that's a lot of different APIs, all under the BigQuery umbrella. And we didn't even talk through other related products like Data Catalog. But don't worry, we talked about programmatic data governance last week, so make sure to check it out. As always, thanks for joining us for BigQuery Spotlight, and make sure to look through the links below for details on what we discussed today and code samples for the various APIs. And remember, stay curious. <laughs>